Now there is this another shortcut in modulus functions, which again is very important and it is based on inequality relationship. Now we know that there are two inequalities. Now the first one is mod of x plus y is always less than or equal to mod x plus mod y and the other one is mod of x minus y it is always greater than or equal to mod of mod of x minus mod of y. Now you'll find many a problems where you'll get the same setup but rather than this inequality you'll be given an equality. So you'll get this question where they'll give you mod of x plus y equals mod of x plus mod of y or the question could be mod of x minus y is equal to mod of x minus mod of y their positive value. Now this condition is only possible when both of them they are of the same sign. So the only condition that we'll get from here is this x into y it should be greater than or equal to zero. Either both of them are positive or both of them they are negative. Say for example, so say for example, a question is given as mod of x square minus 4x plus 9 plus 2x minus 3 is equal to mod of x square plus 4x plus 9 and plus mod of 2x minus 3, which is mod x plus y is same as mod x plus mod y. So in this case, the only condition I'll get is x into y should be greater than or equal to zero. So I can write it as x square plus 4x plus 9 into 2x minus 3 and it should be greater than or equal to 0. So now I need to solve this inequality. Inequalities we have already discussed in previous lectures. Now for this quadratic expression part, now for this one, what is the value of d? Value of d is d is minus 20 and a is 1. So when d is less than 0 and a is greater than 0, this quadratic equation is always positive. So in my inequality, if there is any expression that doesn't change sign, I'll remove the expression from the inequality, keeping the sign. So in this case, the answer to this question will be 2x minus 3 should be greater than or equal to 0, x should be greater than or equal to 3 by 2. I'll take up another example. So the question is, solve this mod of x minus 2 plus mod of x minus 7 equals 5. Now, what I do know is if I'll subtract x minus 2 from x minus 7 and if I'll take mod, I'll get this value is 5. I can write this equation as mod of x minus 2. Now, mod of x is same as mod of minus x. So, I can write it as 7 minus x and I can write it as x minus 2 plus 7 minus x which is 5. So, in this case, again, this is mod x plus mod y equals mod of x plus y. So, again, I can write it as x which is x minus 2 into 7 minus x should be greater than or equal to 0. So what are the roots? Roots are 2 and 7. So I'll put it on number line. So this is 2, this is 7. Rightmost coefficient of x plus, coefficient of x minus. So plus into minus is minus. So minus, plus and minus I need greater than or equal to 0. So which is plus. So solution to this equation is value of x should lie between 2 and 7. So if the value of x lies between 2 and 7, then in that case mod of x minus 2 plus mod of x minus 7 will be 5. Now the question is mod of 2 to the power x minus 1 plus 4 minus 2 to the power x is less than 3. Now what I see in this question is if I'm going to add these two, so I'll get 3. So if I write this as mod of a and this as b, so right hand side is essentially a plus b and says mod a plus mod b should be less than mod of a plus b. But we know that mod of a plus mod of b is always greater than the mod of a plus b. So what we know is these two conditions can simultaneously be true only if mod of a plus mod of b is equal to mod of a plus b in which case the condition I'll get is a into b should be greater than or equal to zero. So that means here I'll get this condition as 2 to the power x minus 1 into 4 minus 2 to the power x and this should be greater than or equal to 0. So I'll find roots. So x is 0 and x is 2. I'll put it on the number line. Sag of the rightmost. So this is minus plus and minus. I need greater than 0 which is plus. So answer to this question will be x belongs to included 0 to included 2. 
Now this question is mod of x upon x minus 1 plus mod of x is equal to x square upon x minus 1. So what I see is if I let these two x upon x minus 1 plus x. So what I'll get is x minus 1 into x square. So again I see this form mod a plus mod b is equal to mod of a plus b. So again here the condition will be a into b should be greater than or equal to 0. So I'll get x upon x minus 1 into x it should be greater than or equal to 0. So this is x square upon x minus 1 it should be greater than or equal to 0. Now x square is always positive so I can remove it from the inequality. Now 1 upon x minus 1 should be greater than or equal to 0. Root of the denominator is 1. Rightmost it is plus and then minus I need greater than 0. So which is plus and because 1 lies in the denominator I won't include it. Now because we have removed x square and there is an equality sign. So rule number 3 says I need to add roots of the expression in the final solution. So I need to add x equals 0 also. So either x is 0 or x lies between 1 and infinite. Now here the question is number of integers x satisfying this equation which is sin inverse mod of x minus 2 plus cos inverse 1 minus 3 minus x is equal to pi by 2. Now this is only possible if it is identity and it is identity when sin inverse x plus cos inverse x is pi by 2. So this is true when x minus 2 is equal to 1 minus mod of 3 minus x which we can write as mod of x minus 2 plus mod of 3 minus x and it is equal to 1 and we can also express this as mod of x minus 2 plus 3 minus x and it'll be x minus 2 plus 3 minus x. Now this is nothing but mod a plus mod b and it is equal to mod of a plus b which is true if and only if a and b they are of the same sign. So that means a and b should be greater than or equal to 0. So the condition that we'll get from here is x minus 2 into 3 minus x it should be greater than or equal to 0. So there are two critical points 2 and 3. This is minus plus and minus. So this is true when the value of x lies between 2 and 3. Now we need to find integral values of x. So there are two integral values of x, x equals 2 and x equals 3. Now we'll put x equals 2, it'll be sine inverse 0 and here it will be cos inverse 0 which lies in the domain and if we'll put x as 3, it'll be sine inverse 1 and here it'll be cos inverse 1 which again lies in its domain. So there are two integral values of x possible and they are x equals 2 and x equals 3. So number of integers is simply 2 and that's your option B.